Hey everybody, just want to remind you to support Project YM and your favorite YouTube channel, The Popish Plot. And save yourself 10% off your favorite Catholic Balm Co. products. By shopping at Catholic Balm Co. That is catholicbalm.co and using the code PLOT2021 at your checkout to get that 10% off. Now on with the show. Welcome to The Popish Plot. I'm Nate. I'm Jessica. And I'm Mike. Today we are here to review the book, The Fisherman's Tomb, by... Uh, John O'Neill. Continuing our tradition, a recent tradition, of reviewing books by non-saints, in this instance, again, we're not throwing shade on John O'Neill, he's still alive, and therefore, by definition, not a saint. And also, if at all possible, and, and quite often it is, not read by me. <laughs> Although, we no should... offense, I, I, it's not that I didn't want to read it, it's, once again, I just really don't often have time to read. And we promise you, viewers, we are very shortly going to violate that tradition by reviewing a book that Nate has, in fact, read. Um, I think technically a book, he listened to the audiobook. I know lots of people listen to audiobooks to describe that as reading, so... Yeah. Uh, technically, technically, technically <laughs> I had it read to me. Again, I'm, I'm not defending this. I just know lots of people who listen to audiobooks who describe it as I read that book. Yeah. I, yes. I know the beginning, the middle, and the end. You know, I mostly listen to podcasts instead of audiobooks, but you know, same rough, roughly the same principle. Anyway, so, so the who is this fisherman? So the fisherman is our buddy, Simon Peter. The first pope. Papa Peter. Papa Pietro. So the subtitle, The Fisherman's Tomb, The True Story of the Vatican's Secret Search. So tradition tells us that St. Peter's Basilica is built upon the tomb of St. Peter, who was martyred in Rome under the mad emperor Nero, you know, roughly 64 to 66 AD. And upside down. Yes. Also, traditionally, he was crucified upside down because he did not consider himself worthy to be crucified in the same manner as our blessed Savior. This, I guess, would sort of also apply to his brother Andrew, who was crucified on an X instead of a T. Yeah. But... Okay. Tradition says that Peter that St. Peter's is built on Peter's tomb, but for many, many centuries, we didn't exactly know where Peter's tomb was. I mean, it was, people were busy, they had a hard enough time saving the scriptures from persecution. Exactly. exactly. And then, well, it's not like at the time they could go and build the church there because, well, number one, it was it was Nero Circus, and number two, after even after that time for a while. But not only this, this was a firm belief of the church. But at the time of the you know, first the Reformation, and then the Enlightenment, lots of people, without having any evidence, began to throw lots and lots of shade on this theory. No less a figure than Martin Luther asserted, again, without any shred of evidence, but he asserted that, well, there's really no reason to believe that Peter was ever at Rome anyway. Because, of course, he wanted to be the Pope, so he had to undermine the authority of the true Pope. And just you know, the Enlightenment figures cast a lot of shade on all Christian traditions saying, well, it's not really reliable. It's just a lot of pious fictions. And so this doubt began to creep into the church. That's why when um, now venerable Pius XII, then the Pope, initiated this archaeological work under the Vatican, he did so in secret. Because he had a firm belief that Peter was there. But on the off chance that he wasn't, he didn't want that news to come out. Especially because there had been earlier digs in the early modern period that had you know, sort of rummaged around beneath St. Peter's Basilica, but had not found the fisherman's tomb. And so he was afraid, well, you know, it's possible that we might not find him again. Yes, yes. Having read this book, and although, you know, I didn't end up going into archaeology at all, I was super interested in it when I was younger. I, I don't know how they ever... This is horrible archaeology. This is not how you do archaeology. Yeah. On any of it. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the, the real problem is that archaeology is a very new science, and it evolved only in the 20th century with a lot of fits and starts. You know, one of the most famous archaeologists of all time is uh, Schliemann, who discovered Troy. And, By digging through the Troy he was looking for. Yeah, and destroyed lots of stuff as he was digging down to wherever he wanted. This, and this has the same problem. We're looking for Peter's too. Mm -hmm. What's this? It's important. It's historic. It's thousands of years old. Not Peter. <laughs> Well, and, and because they wanted to do this in secret, the people in charge of it were priests, mm -hmm. not archaeologists. And I mean, 
Not- Logically, there's got to be some priests who are archaeologists, but he was dealing with people who are priests who are in Rome who can keep the secret. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> so, what the, the great villain of the story is the Jesuit priest Antonio uh, Ferrua. Who was up to something. And was a cultural vandal. You know, they just plowed through stuff. As Jess said, they casually tossed things aside. When they were digging, they encountered human remains, which should, even if they're pagans, mm-hmm. all humans are created in the image and likeness of God and their remains should be treated with respect. Mm-hmm. They just tossed Collect the, them and, and, and rebury them somewhere else. Nope, and... they just tossed the bones aside. Oh, okay. Because yeah. eh, it doesn't matter. I mean, they didn't even do the, you know, classic European thing of oh. we have too much bones of, let's put this and make it art with it. Oh, no, that's totally kosher. Yeah. Yeah. If so they, I want to see a bone chapel. Actually, Especially when the Capuchins do it, because I assume that the, the brothers consented, the friars consented before they died. It's like the release form you've signed. You will make coffee. You will be named after monkeys. You will let us make... No, monkeys are named after them, but... Yeah. You will let us go and make cool art with your bones. Oh, come on. Um, that'd be one of the best parts about joining that particular co- that particular you know group of friars. Oh, man. When I die... Do something artistic with me. Well, and, and, and realistically, I, I think that, that would actually be elevating the, the remains. Yes. You, you're not only setting them apart, mm-hmm. but you're setting them above. Amen. Despite all the missteps mm-hmm. of the dig. So many missteps. So many missteps. Until finally they brought in a female archaeologist, Margarita Guarducci. And you know, she ends up being the one who deciphers the code and discovers the fisherman's tomb. But, you know, and we'll talk more about her in just a minute, Mm -hmm. but throughout all this, Pius kept digging, and eventually they did find Peter. This teaches us two things. One, trust sacred tradition. I'm not talking about your your family traditions, the little T stuff that you do, but especially in American Catholicism, we are very influenced by the errors of our Protestant brothers and sisters in... Elevating the scriptures and read your dang Bible, mm-hmm. but denigrating the tradition. Whereas when we properly consider it, scripture is a part of the tradition. It had always been the belief of Christians that St. Peter's was built by Constantine atop the grave of Peter the Apostle. Yes, with the altar actually directly above. And even if that wasn't correct, it's not like it's going to disprove the whole faith. Yeah, but (laughs) when they dug, they found out that, holy smokes, the main altar of St. Peter's Basilica, the second St. Peter's built in the 1600s, is directly over (laughs) the tomb of a man, a heavy built man in his 60s of Palestinian origin whose feet were cut off. Which was common if you were crucified. <laughs> Especially upside down. Yeah. <laughs> this is Peter. But Antonio... Plus there were numerous signs saying Peter is here. Which, so, you know, again, the, the one guy didn't read and, and she did the thing like on TVs where you see it light up in the, and she's like... Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> well, again, we're, we're talking about people who were under constant persecution. Yeah. Peter himself was executed. So, to expect them to have put up in, like, flashing neon, first of all, one of them would have had to invent neon, yes. or you know, neon <laughs> lights, and then neon another, and then and another would have light. had to develop an electrical supply. <laughs> but for them to put up in big, shiny neon, Peter is here. But they did the ancient equivalent. Even though it took time, and they could have been arrested and killed for doing it, people still carved in iconography that they could understand, Peter is here. But it took someone who was willing to try to look back to see that. Whereas the Farua team, you know, just blundering ahead, had no interest in seeing that. But here we come to the second part. The horrible, horrible scourge of sexism. You may remember in our Gianna Barretta Mola episode, she faced a good deal of sexism in 20th century Italy. Now, we're not throwing shade at the Italians. America has had plenty of problems with sexism, too. But part of the reason why Margarita Guarducci wasn't taken seriously, despite her brilliance and her already significant archaeological achievements before she ever arrived at the Vatican, was because she's, she's a, woman. a woman. So why would Farua, who was not only a priest but a man, 
care about a woman, especially when she's telling him that he's wrong. History has borne out Margarita Guarducci, but in her life, she was slandered, she was lied about, she was run out of the Vatican, and she was attacked for being overly pious. Which is humorous because when she started out, she was one of those nominal Catholics who was raised Catholic, but you know, she was a scientist and she, she's going to be like, I, I need the cold hard facts. Well, and not the, only that, and but the cold hard facts led her to deeper faith. Yeah. Not only that, but I would say that while I would totally respect a priest telling me that I'm overly scrupulous, <laughs> I, I'd have to uh, question any priest that would tell me that I'm overly pious. Uh, it seems to I be may, something they're for. Well, I might be—I might be taking <laughs> piety to an unhealthy extent, but at that point, it would actually cease to be piety. It would—it would be something that was detrimental to me, and they should be like, "Look, you're good, but you're taking this too far." Well, and it just—they—they they were approaching things, you know, completely backwards. She was looking at the incredible witness of the first Christian generations, and this deepened her own faith. Whereas Farua and his team thought of themselves as models of Christian perfection, and everyone had come who would come before was probably polluted by pagan nonsense. Hmm. Yes, <sighs> although we haven't mentioned it, I also like that this book has an American connection mm -hmm. because the pope, America. <laughs> the pope basically went in and called up a guy through his you know various channels to be like hey can you finance something that we don't know how much it's going to cost and it might not do anything and, and he was we like really okay <laughs> and we can't really tell you what it is but and you can't tell anyone and else and you can't ever take any credit <laughs> yeah no no a, an american oil man named george strake who gave pius the 12th a blank check <laughs> and, and and this again you know some some christians are very afraid of money and yes we should be afraid of the love of money but we have to remember, the only reason why our blessed Savior had a tomb was because the rich man, Joseph of Arimathea, was a follower of his. If you use, you can have lots of money, as long as you use it for the glory of God and not for your own glory. Yes, and yeah. he was one of those people who were like, I'm going to give enough that my kids, you know, aren't, you know, with nothing, but yeah. I want to get rid of everything well, pretty much. Again, Rerum Novarum <laughs> says that. You should, you, you you have to observe the bounds of propriety. Yeah. You, your kids shouldn't be wearing clothes that are full of holes. Yeah. Right. But at the same time, <laughs> while we should not be trying to get rich, trying to get poor is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So the, the, another great connection is the line from Pius XII mm -hmm. to St. Paul VI who features in this book as Giovanni Montini before he's Pope, huh. to the current Holy Father, Pope Francis, who has had special veneration of the bones and even gifted some of these bones to Patriarch Bartholomew of Constantinople as a profound ecumenical gesture. Because they're like besties for being, you know, patriarchs of different religions. They, <laughs> they seriously... I'm, I'm very optimistic... You know, not so much with the Russians because they've, they've got their own deal going on, but I'm very optimistic that we may be able to achieve some kind of reunification with the Orthodox under Bartholomew because he is extremely committed to the cause, but that's a subject for another day. Yes. Yeah. So, women are created in the image and likeness of God every bit as much as men are, and sexism against women is just wrong. Full stop, wrong. Women should not be dismissed just because they're women, nor should men be dismissed just because they're men. That's correct. And they should be dismissed for being horrible at archaeology. <laughs> bad archaeologists should be dismissed no matter who they are. At least for archaeology. I mean, he, he might have been good at, you know, other stuff. He might have been good at priesting. Maybe he was a really good canasta player. Maybe. <laughs> Do they play that in Italy? I'm sure someone has at some point. I mean, probably, you know, by now it's more international. <laughs> so... Just, as Christians, we have nothing to fear from science. Yes, there are lots of people who you know, don't believe in science, but instead believe in scientism, and that's a terrible thing that needs to be opposed. But we have nothing to fear from legitimate science. So, The Fisherman's Tomb by John O'Neill. A brief but fascinating story of a forgotten part of our heritage. 
the fact that, holy smokes, these things that we've always said are in fact actually true. St. Peter's really is built atop the tomb of Peter. And it took overcoming bad archaeology and chauvinism to achieve this. But now we know that, holy smokes, the tradition was right the whole time. Take that, Luther. So go down below, and in the comments section, maybe give us a book that was written by somebody who's not a saint. And being alive is perfectly a fine yep. reason. Because these two have lots of time to read, and they love doing it. I, I love You're just do, a I, quick reader. I, I, love I, I reading. don't have that much time. <laughs> I love reading. I am a slow reader, and I have very little time. So... These two will happily go and read it, and I will, and I will be happy to give my my uh, my third party comments uh, <laughs> on their review. Shortly, we will be receiving from our friends at Catholic Answers a complimentary copy of Cy Kellett's new book about Jesus, which I sincerely hope that even Nate will have time to read. I will have to make time to read. He's that. working on the other one. I am working on the other one very so, slowly. He so, reads about one and a half books per year. So sure, yeah. but comment below with, again, you have more books that Nate shouldn't read. Yep. <laughs> Jess devours at least two a week, so... I, I, uh, I slowed it down. Jess devours more than that. I've only read 17 so far this year. I said at least. <laughs> that, that means there could be more. <laughs> Give this episode a like, subscribe to our channel, ring the church bell to be notified when the next episode will be uploaded, though... You know, we had a busier than expected Lent, so don't expect more than the average content through Easter. And until next time, remember to live your faith, love your faith, and share that love. love.